In this video, we will study the 10 different ways to determine if your refrigerator is running out of refrigerant. We will explore methods without tools, suitable for beginner users, and other more precise methods that require specific tools. 1. Checking the compressor's operation. Turn on the refrigerator and see if the compressor vibrates or sounds normal. Check the compressor's temperature. If it works correctly with the right amount of refrigerant, the compressor will be hot, usually above 60 degrees Celsius. 2. Checking the condenser. Touch the condenser or external grill. If the equipment is working well, it will be hot, as this component expels heat. In models without an external grill, touch the back and side of the refrigerator, which should also be hot. Check for oil stains on the pipes. The presence of oil indicates a refrigerant leak. 3. Freezer Fan Review Remove the internal cover of the freezer to rule out the presence of internal ice blocks due to poor defrosting or evaporator operation. See if the fan is spinning and doing so at the right speed. A slow fan can cause a deficit in heat exchange, resulting in excess cold and abnormal ice formation. 4. Observation of the defrosting process. It is essential to confirm that this process is carried out correctly as ice accumulation affects heat exchange and equipment performance. Verify that the equipment performs the defrost cycles correctly. When the defrost process takes place, the equipment will be off for several minutes, and depending on the equipment, there may be the use of electric resistance to accelerate thawing. Depending on the model, defrost control can be time-based or temperature-based. In case of a defrost system failure, focus on the defrost timer, electronic control board, defrost electric resistance, or the bimetal. 6. Observation of the capillary tube. Observe if there is freezing in the capillary tube or only parts of the freezer evaporator. In this case, the problem is an internal obstruction in the capillary tube or some internal tube of the evaporator. 7. If the equipment works with electronic boards, visual verification of temperature sensors. In refrigerators with electronic boards and temperature sensors, visually check the connection and position of these sensors. A problem with them can generate incorrect equipment operation and confuse the user with a fault due to lack of gas. If you have a digital multimeter, you can disconnect the sensors and measure the electrical resistance of the temperature sensors. Their value on the kilom scale should never be zero or infinite. Also, when rubbing the sensor with your hand, the resistance value should change. If you have the device catalog, verify its actual values. With the sensor connected and the electronic board, you can measure if there is voltage supply to the sensor. 8. Electric Consumption Measurement With the equipment on, use an ammeter clamp to measure electrical consumption. Equipment with a lack of gas consumes less current than usual. Compare the value obtained with the RLA, regular consumption, of the device. 9. If the compressor has a service port, with the equipment off, use a screwdriver to pierce the gas port. If refrigerant gas comes out, the equipment still has a charge. This last test only indicates that there is gas present, not the quantity. 10. Pressure measurement with gauges. If the equipment has a service port, and you have pressure gauges, measure the pressure with the equipment on. In this case, 
typical pressures for refrigerators working with an evaporator temperature of minus 20 degrees Celsius R. For our 134A, the pressure on your gauge should be above, but very close to 4.7 pounds per square inch. For our 404A, the pressure on your gauge should be above, but very close to 29.55 pounds per square inch. For our 600A, the pressure on your gauge should be above, but very close to negative 4.2 pounds per square inch.